Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. May He bless you in the same way He has blessed me. May He bless you as well. In the same way that He has been merciful and compassionate and tolerant towards me, may He also be with you all. That's my sincere desire. From, with all my heart, with all my sincerity, I desire this and I pray for you daily. You can be sure of that. Even if you don't even ask for my prayers, I still pray for you. All of you. All of you. It's not just you who are watching me, but all those who are in the same ark, in the same boat with us. Because in this boat that we've entered, in this ark that we've entered, which is the Universal Church, we face many waves, big waves, strong winds, storms, and so on. However, the nice thing is that in this ark, in this boat that we are in, our Lord is with us as well. Isn't it nice? And that's what we have been trying to pass on to you so that you will not worry with the day of tomorrow, so that you are not going to be occupied your thoughts with useless, futile things that is just for the day of today or for a few years. You have to worry you should worry or occupy yourself with preserving your soul, the salvation of your soul. Because, yes, it, it is eternal. Your soul you have to take care of 24 hours per day. And there is no holiday. There is no vacation. It's every single day. 24 hours per day. You have to take care of your soul without ceasing, and that's why we have been focusing on trying to help people to examine their heart and not let it get involved with feelings or resentments and grudges towards anybody. Be free from these feelings. Keep your heart clean, clean and light. The Bible says, that above all things, above all things, above money, above your social position, above all things, we have to keep what? The heart. Above all things you should keep, you should keep your heart. Because from your heart flows the fountain of life. And speaking of the heart, because when we speak about the heart, we are speaking of soul or life. When the Bible speaks of soul and the heart, it's speaking about life. The eternal life is the eternal soul, is the salvation of the soul for eternity. So that's what we have to take care of. And that's what we've been taking care of when we speak to you about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Because when Jesus speaks about this story, I find it so nice, so nice, so glorious. Because he's speaking to his followers what happens after death. Because we know what happens throughout this life. Here on earth, we know the problems, the difficulties, the pains of life and so on. However, he wants us to have a vision that is beyond, beyond the appearances. He wants us to have his vision. He passes this on to us when he, he speaks about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Because he introduces these two extremes, two extremes. The rich was extremely rich, the most powerful man on earth. Whereas the poor was the poorest, the most miserable on earth. The rich man, 
was from the point of view of the faith, he was so rich, so rich, so rich, so rich, that he only had money and nothing else. He was empty. And that's what happens with rich people in this world, or those who think they are rich in this world. They are so rich that the only thing they have is money. But money does not save the soul. Yes or no? Money does not buy peace. Yes or no? So you see there in, in the war there between Russia and Ukraine, they have money. But how about peace? Isn't it? Money does not buy this state of spirit, this emotional state of the person being well with themselves and above all with God. Money doesn't buy that. Money doesn't buy that. You can see here that Jesus says that, that the rich man clothed himself in purple. And then I went to check what this meant. And purple was a type of garment in red that passed on the idea, it still passes on the idea of dignity, of royalty. You know, it, like a queen, like a king, the owner of things, someone very important, and so on and so on. So purple meant that. It was a red-colored garment. So he would dress up with that sumptuous clothing, like a cardinal, like a king, like a prince, and so on, and so on, and so on. So the rich was like this. He clothed in purple in an ostentatious way. And he would even, let's say, hurt the, the eye of the poor with that ostentatious way of living. But not only dressing in, in purple, in red, but also with fine linen. Fine linen, the, the clothes were made, were made with a very special fabric that was very light, very delicate, like for a baby that wouldn't irritate the skin. It was very soft, fine linen. So you can only imagine how it was. I don't know if it exists nowadays still, but back then, as Jesus said, it was something, let's say, very extravagant. And he also fared sumptuously every day it was not just a few days of the week or only on Saturdays. It was every day from Monday to Monday, he fared sumptuously, which meant he had a very pleasant life, very enjoyable, very good, with abundance, much abundance. He would eat from the best he, he could afford. There was nothing that his eyes were seeing that he could not buy. There was nothing that he could imagine. Oh, I want to eat this and that. So he had conditions to go and get it because he was very rich, very rich. He was extremely rich. And not only a comfortable life, but also he lived sumptuously in a way, in a manner that was admired by others. Everybody admired him. Everybody was envious of him. Such was his greatness. Such was the glamorous way that he used to live every single day. So imagine a person who is rich with this profile that Jesus described here from this rich man. And that's how it is nowadays. Like, for example, these people who are on social media showing off houses, planes, yachts, and houses, and branded clothing, and shoes, and shoes of that, and things made of gold, like the, the sheikhs from the Middle East, they have cars that are made of gold, just to show off. 
very well, my dear friend. They are so rich, so rich, so rich, that they only have that. Or actually, they are so poor, so poor, so poor, that they only have that. So they don't even know what to do with the money they have. So they create things, they invent things to try and comfort their soul. They try to alleviate the pain of their soul because they are so rich, so powerfully rich. They dress in purple in an ostentatious way with fine linen and they live with abundance, with splendor every day. Yet their soul is extremely empty and many end up even ending their own life because they don't find a purpose for their life. Many even use drugs, the drugs that we know. They use it a lot to try and comfort, bring a little bit of peace to their soul, but they can't do it because this peace God gives to the poor that comes through faith. Look at what Jesus said. Pay attention to what Jesus says here. On the other end, on the other side from the rich man, we had the poor. And it, the text says that there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate desiring he only wanted to feed himself with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table that's all he only wanted to satisfy his hunger and with him there were dogs they would come those street dogs that would stink full of fleas and ticks and everything that was bad. These extremely skinny dogs would come to lick his sores. This was the situation of the, the poor man. That was the vision of the poor, which was the opposite of the situation of the rich man. So Jesus mentions in this parable, actually not a parable, this really happened there in Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem and he took its, its inhabitants into captivity and there some of them became rich some of them, very few of them, happened just like what happened to this rich man. But also the majority, many of them ended up like Lazarus, miserably hungry, going through need. And so there are two extremes, which is what happens in the world today. There are those who are extremely rich, very, very, very rich. And there are those who are poor, very, very poor, who have absolutely nothing. So, now, this situation here that we tried to show you, so you can imagine how it was, this shows the two sides of life. But pay attention. Pay attention how nice it is. The Lord Jesus himself is the one who spoke about the rich man and he also had spoken about another rich man, another man who was rich. And now it's a parable. He spoke through a parable. We are going to speak through parables now. And he said like this, that uh, the field of a man, the ground of a certain rich man, yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said to himself, I will put down my barns and build greater 
and there I will store in my crops all my crops and, and my goods. And then I will keep everything there. And I will tell my soul, look at that, the rich man, the other rich man from the parable. He's a parable. I will say to my soul, 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 you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Exactly what happened to the rich man there from Lazarus, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, the same thing. Which means people are so, so blind that they cannot see. For example, we have the new president now that will last for four years. Four years. And later on, another one will replace him if he lives this long. And this is how life is. Me as well. Sooner or later, I will depart. And you who are watching me as well, you will also depart from here. All of us will depart from here. How about the soul? This is the problem. How about your soul? Where is it going? Where will your soul go? Do you know where your soul is going? Because if your soul is suffering in this moment, if it is groaning right now, imagine what will suffer. Imagine what it will suffer there in eternity. And that's what Jesus is trying to show. He's saying the following, it's pointless for you to have everything in this world and lose your soul. What's the point of you having all the wealth of this world, but when you die, your soul that will live throughout eternity, your soul will live throughout eternity, either with God in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, or in the kingdom of the lake of fire and brimstone, where there will be crying and gnashing of teeth without ceasing, weeping and gnashing of teeth without ceasing, because the pain that people feel in their soul today, many of them are ending their life. Right now, as I speak, there are people killing themselves. I, I don't have an accurate number, but I was told that every four minutes or every four seconds someone commits suicide which means they kill themselves the pain is so great so great and it's not just the poor people doing that people who are rich who are powerful in this world killing themselves for example we had some time ago do you remember getulio vargas for those who don't know he used to be a brazilian president and he was elected several times and re-elected again. But after he lost everything, he shot himself in the head. Why? Because his soul was suffering. He was, we can say, a patron of the working class. Very well. He shot himself in the head. Where is his soul? So, my dear friend, what I am trying to say to you is that you have a soul in there. Within your body, there is a soul, whether it's a perfect body, muscled and very good looking and sculptural, full of beauty, full of wealth and glory, very well decorated with expensive clothing and everything else. But your soul, how is your soul? How is your soul? So Jesus speaks here of the destination of the soul, in this case here, of the rich man and Lazarus. In this parable here, in the parable that he speaks of the rich man who says, I will tell my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years, take your ease, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, fool, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have prepared? Meaning you are going to leave everything behind and your soul will travel. But where to? Where to? You who are watching me, 
by the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, by the Word of the Lord Jesus, my dear friend. The soul, your soul is priceless. It's worth more than anything that you can see in this world. It's worth more than everything that exists in this world. So what God wants is for us to take care of our soul and examine and ponder where is our soul going? Because just as he showed the wealth of the rich man and Lazarus' poverty, he also shows that the poor, when he died, his soul went to heaven and the soul of the rich man went to hell. And we are going to see that, we are going to continue seeing that tomorrow because we have a lot to speak about still and meditate and reason in order to try to awaken the faith that saves the soul. May God bless all of you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.